Hi, everybody. My name is Erin Kim, and it's an honor to be here representing New Harvest. New Harvest is a New York-based nonprofit accelerating, the, accelerating breakthroughs in cellular agriculture since 2004. This new field of science that we're building involves the production of agricultural products like food, such as meat, milk, and eggs, and materials like leather, silk, and bone from the cellular level through biotechnology, whether that's through cell culture, fermentation, or other methods not involving whole animals. This is an emerging discipline which lies at the unlikely intersection of medicine and food science using relatively recent advances in tissue engineering or the growth of human tissues for medical applications. And applying these to growing proteins, cells, tissues, and molecular ingredients for food and other uses. Some of these can be produced by either employing yeast to make them for us, as in the case of acellular products, or by growing them cell by cell for cellular products. Things have gotten really interesting over the last five years or so, so here's a little rundown of some key events. The first is uh, the public tasting of Mark Poss cultured beef hamburger prototype in 2013. It was produced at a famously high cost of 250,000 euros and many months of culturing each of the 20,000 cow muscle fibers by hand and then coloring them red with beet juice. It didn't taste great, but since then, cultured meat has become by far the most hotly anticipated application of cellular agriculture. 2014 saw the first few cellular agriculture food startups being founded, two of which were direct spin-outs from New Harvest. So we had Perfect Day Foods, formerly known as Mufri, who were making dairy milk proteins from yeast, and Clara Foods, who are using a similar process to make egg white proteins. But as all this startup activity was beginning to take place, the field and emerging industry didn't even yet have a name. So the word cellular agriculture was coined on our Facebook community page in 2015. Usage of this word has since spread from our tiny online community of just a few hundred people at the time to be being used by NASA and the American National Academy of Sciences and mentions from around the world. From 2016 to present, interest in cultured meat has gone off the charts. New startups continue to form at an accelerating pace. But despite all of this excitement, research in this field is still extremely neglected. It began to dawn on us as the proto-industry grew further still that what is needed even before actual cultured meat products can reach dinner plates is an, an actual product pipeline. And the first step towards that pipeline is a foundation of openly accessible research. But first, what's the point of investing all this time, energy, and funding into cellular agriculture? Well, being able to produce meat and other animal products from cell cultures instead of whole animals may require less water and land usage and give off fewer greenhouse gas emissions. Some researchers also believe that this could lead to more customizability across food applications as well as to materials, cosmetics, industrial ingredients, and medicine. But it needs to be stressed that although these are very exciting and promising possibilities, all the beneficial claims that are being made about cultured meat and cellular agriculture remain purely speculation until there are tangible products that can be studied independently and not just prototypes. Today, there isn't yet enough data to support whether or not these proposed benefits will actually be realized and to what extent. So if we're not quite at that stage of having products ready for the market, where exactly is the state of research today? This might be easier to frame in terms of what we still don't have, which includes, but is not limited to, a reliable standardized source of cells for each animal and tissue type, whether that's a species of cow, pig, chicken, or fish, and all of the cell types that make up a cut of meat. So not just muscle, but also fat, connective tissue, and blood, for example. We also don't have a method of producing enough of these cells affordably and sustainably to be able to release even a high-cost product, let alone one for mass consumption. And most importantly, we still don't have a way for expertise specific to cultured meat to be generated in an openly accessible setting, outside of New Harvest, that is. So cellular agriculture is an interdisciplinary field, but there aren't yet any courses or degree programs being offered at a university level, not even a textbook. Academic, peer-reviewed scientific papers are few and far between, but that isn't super surprising because, again, this is a very new field of science that we're building as we go. From a non-technical standpoint, we also don't know 
once cultured meat is produced at scale, will it actually taste the same as conventional meat or will it taste different for better or for worse? And how will cell cultured food products be regulated? There are some preliminary moves being made in the US by interest groups both for and against cultured meat, but as the nature of this field remains so highly speculative, it's still unclear how exactly end products will be regulated and by whom. And of course that will vary from country to country. So when will products be available? We still don't know. Predictions are still coming and going, and with company research happening behind closed doors, we can only wait and see. There are some bold predictions being made, but still no cultured meat products on the market today. Now, what's being done to address these unknowns? Well, New Harvest is tackling the technical side of things by funding an international network of cultured meat scientists and creating a quite unusual atmosphere of openness and collaboration among researchers. Our fellows are required to publish their work in open access journals, which is something that would be basically unheard of if the landscape were composed of just companies alone. Through New Harvest channels, the public is learning alongside us about basic cultured meat concepts like vascularization or the formation of blood vessels in vitro, and that's what you're looking at on the far right slide. Um, the middle slide is a culture of turkey fibroblasts that were cultured um, in the lab, and it's starting to look a little bit more meat-like, but the photo on the left side of that slide is a picture of meat from the store looked at under the microscope, so it shows that there is still quite a while of... quite a ways of research left to go. We've also provided grants for projects like this scalable bioreactor prototype at the University of British Columbia. And prior to this, we were hearing a lot about how meat might someday be produced in big steel tanks like you might find in a beer brewery. But it was left mostly to our imaginations to picture what that might look like. This prototype has not yet been tested, but it's one of many steps that will be required before we get to that beer brewery vision for meat. So it's extremely important to us that we communicate the progress of this work in an honest and science-based manner. That means sharing the exciting and positive developments and also some of the downsides, like the fact that cultured meat is not quite totally animal-free yet, as much of this research is still dependent upon animal-based serums, and that very often in science you run into unforeseen roadblocks, like cell contamination and processes that can be extremely repetitive, boring, and slow moving. Our approach doesn't necessarily lead to the most exciting news headlines, but it's a longer game that we're playing in generating more trust from prospective consumers and in building meaningful relationships from players from many different worlds, whether that's academia or government or industry. And I would like to end on two quotes from Carl Sagan. The first is simple. With insufficient data, it is easy to go wrong. We, as the cellular agriculture community, have been doing a lot of talking for quite a few years now about the amazing potential of what we're building. But it's time to back up some of that talk with some hard evidence. And the second is, if you want to make apple pie from scratch, you must first create the universe. As such a new field, we are not just trying to create that one holy grail product of a cultured meat burger or steak. To do so requires an entirely new foundation of knowledge that can be sustained and built upon into the future. So New Harvest is approaching this work with a broad view to all that is needed to see that universe. <laughs>